like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting. Happy Chinese New Year, or Rabbit. Xin Nian Kuai Le. In the last part, we saw Chu Xiao turn back with a perfectly calm face towards He Xiao and continued to ask, He Xiao, are you blaming me? He Xiao lowered his head and replied, I do not dare. By saying this, you are blaming me. Chu Xiao smiled bitterly. Her smile disappearing in an instant as she continued, No matter whether you believe me or not, we have been through many battles together all these years. I have always regarded you as my best friend. By leaving, I didn't mean to abandon all of you. I understand. He Xiao suddenly looked up, reverting to a state of calmness and shedding his aura of glory, which he had demonstrated on the battlefield. Quietly, he added, I have never blamed you. You are looking out for us, giving us the best escape route. I understand all this. This was the first time that they addressed each other by name. He looked at her quietly. As he spoke slowly, All these years I witnessed as you soldiered on. I understand the difficulties that you faced. Perhaps sometimes I thought that I had been selfish back then. If I had shorted out my thoughts, I would not have let circumstance drive you to disappearation. Even if the Southwest Eminist garrison had become bandits, or if every one of us died, we should not have let you shoulder this responsibility, opposing the King of Yanbei, resulting in this state today. Chu Xiao shook her head as she thought to herself. There had already been irreconcilable differences between Yan Shun and herself. Even without the existence of the Southwest Emissary's garrison, other reasons would have culminated in their fallout. It was but a matter of time. He Xiao did not wait for her to speak as he spoke frankly. After all, you are just a young girl. Back then, we failed to see this clearly. He looked up and smiled gently, like an elder watching over his descendants. Your Majesty had said before, only if you abandon the past entirely can you attain inner peace. By not calling you general, it doesn't mean that I am distancing myself from you. It just means that I hope you will be able to put the past behind you and live a life for yourself. The water droplets which had accumulated on the branches and leaves on the trees fell to the ground, landing on Chu Xiao's white shoes. She raised her eyebrows as she felt touched. Although Liang is a warm place, it's cold now. Miss, you should go back earlier. As he finished his sentence, he stepped aside for Chu Xiao to leave. However, she suddenly called out, Brother He. He Xiao was utterly stunned as he jerked his head up vigorously to look at her. 
two shall say in a heavy tone, We have known each other for many years, going through life and death together. We are comrades on the battlefield and family outside the battlefield. The desolate winds streamlined across the forest. Xiao's gaze became momentarily distracted. After a long while, he maintained his posture and took a small step back. With a heavy tone, he declared, I am going to Southwest to assume a new appointment. We might not have the chance to meet again. As expected, he had already known. Two Xiao's fingertips turned slightly cold as she looked at a Xiao's lonely shadow. She began to feel a little shocked. She nodded quietly and said, take care. From up here. Following which, she turned around and exited the pavilion. She had barely taken a few steps outwards when a voice rang out from behind her. Xiao Xiao, take care. She turned around to see. He Xiao standing there quietly as he maintained his posture. The wind blew across his clothes. Revealing patterns of greenish brown clouds that had been embroidered on his uniform. A shade of green could be seen around his waist. He was still wearing the belt when he was still part of the Shivli army. Back then, he stood there quietly, his head lowered. It was hard to comprehend that he had uttered those words which had acknowledged their now different relationship status. Chu Xiao froze for a while before she finally turned around and walked in a different direction. After a few turns, Shanglin Garden was no longer in sight. She looked up, realizing that she had inevitably wandered to the foot of Hulang Mountains outside Rohu Palace. However, as Chu Xiao stared at this white pile of rocks in the mountain, she felt a sense of coldness emanating from her heart, enveloping her slowly. Mei Xiang called out to her or it. Chu Xiao remained silent as her gaze fixed slightly on the few palm blossom flowers and the things beyond them. Miss, everyone thinks differently in this world, but you only have one heart. You would not be able to look out for so many people. Mei Xiang's words rang out beside her ear, but Chu Xiao seemingly did not hear them. The winds were big. She suddenly felt a thing of sadness. Commander Ke Xiao has followed you so many years. In time, he will come to understand. Nothing lasts forever. Don't be too sad. Chu Xiao turned around and embarrassed Mei Xiang gently as she said, Mei Xiang, if you want to live with him, go ahead. Thank you so much for watching, stay with me, subscribe to the channel and like the video. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified of the next part of the story. Thank you.